I saw from last night is that the Delta variant now comprises 91% of new cases in the UK.
to your tickets now at the Classic Car Show UK dot com. Where can our trains take you this summer? Whether it's a much needed catch up with friends or a family day out. it says here over the next few weeks uh, we might put that to vaccines minister nadim zahawi is going to be with us in a little over half and a little under half an hour's time and lastly the sun probably rightly for its readership by the way just looks at the um uh, kickoff of the euros but how many if you have a certain vintage how many times have you seen England players roar like a lion while wearing the three lines shirt saying we're determined to bring the cup back to England Well, we, 
almost like home production centres to try and keep up with the needs. So David, you're absolutely right. We'll return to that conversation in a moment. But we do need to go to the seaside where seven world leaders would actually roll up their sleeves and start working today. But it's worth noting, I've got the menu. So newspapers are always obsessed with what they're going to eat. But I've decided to look at something. How are they to be entertained? Well, of course, he's one of his best mates when it was under our President Obama's watch. They had... Then to Germany, obviously on Angela Merkel's watch. They were in the city square of Hamburg for Beethoven. Well, here's a shot for Frau Merkel and Monsieur Macron. This is what's coming your way, Cornwall. wants to do together with the UK on everything from uh, security, working together uh, on all the issues of, of protecting, projecting our values around the world uh, together, but also on, on climate change. So it's a, it's a big breath of fresh air. It's, it's new, it's interesting. Nick, a great deal to be discussed. Of course, this is the first G7 summit in almost two years. A lot, it goes without saying, has happened since the last one. The first session gets underway today. That will be about building back better from COVID. That's a phrase, of course, both Boris Johnson and Joe Biden have used. And as part of that, as part of the sort of sign of the sort of agreements leaders hope to reach, Boris Johnson announcing overnight that the UK will donate 100 million vaccines to countries that need them. Joe Biden going even further, from the US, half a million. We're taking a major step that will supercharge the global fight against this pandemic. In my direction, the United States will purchase an additional half billion doses from Pfizer. I want to thank all of my G7 partners for stepping up to recognize our responsibility to beat the movement. Also, discussions on climate change, gender equality, and of course, foreign policy dealing with the likes of China and Russia, all to come in the next day or so, Nick. But it's not all serious talks, of course, as you just touched on. What's just as important is the leaders building their relationships behind the scenes. Tonight, for example, they'll head to the Eden Project, they'll be greeted by the Queen, by Prince Charles of Camilla, by the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, and they will dine on, how does this sound, spice melon, gazpacho, turbot, roasted on the bone, garlic pesto, Cornish new potatoes. Tomorrow night, as you said, Nick, they will be serenaded by Shisha Sisa shanties on a barbecue on the beach where they will toast marshmallows, we are told. But Boris Johnson has been pretty clear telling LBC yesterday when it comes to food, Nick, he's not going to leave the leaders with much choice. These were his instructions for his fellow counterparts. I think I'm going to advise them firmly to put the jam on first before the cream on the scones. Uh, that's going to be one of the policies that I will be advising. As Boris Johnson concluding Ben Kentish's report on the subject of scones, or is it scones? Ben, thank you. We may well talk again. And thanks to Do Hag Hour, if that's how you pronounce it, which was the Sea Shanty Group. What is the collective noun for Director Generals of the BBC? A confusion? Contradiction? Well, there'll be concern from two of them. I speak of Tony now Lord Hall and John now Lord Burt. There'll be questioned by MPs about the lead-up to that now infamous Martin Bashir's power armor interview with the late, late Diana, Princess of Wales. Tim Luckhurst is principal of South College at Dublin University, former national newspaper editor and senior BBC executive, and joins me now. Tim, what do the MPs need to find out? What do they need to ask? Morning. Good morning. Well, they need to find out precisely why John Bird, who was Director General at the time of the Bashir Diana interview, and Tony Hall, who was head of these current affairs, failed in their duty to ensure proper governance and accountability of the BBC for which they were directly responsible. The problem with that interview was that it breached the guidelines that both Bert and Hall were responsible for upholding. And those guidelines, which are reported to every BBC, 
done by executives and others to keep the BBC journalism to a certain standard. As someone who's worked there, as someone who's lauded it in the past, how embarrassing, how ugly is the Bashir affair to you, Tim? I think it's extraordinarily embarrassing to the BBC. I think that it reminds the corporation, which is going through troubles for entirely different economic reasons now, that in its past it didn't always reach the very high standards for which it's recognised around the world. And that is a really damaging blow to its reputation. I remain a colossal fan of the BBC, but when it falls below very high standards, that problem resounds around Britain and beyond. And that is a major challenge for the current incumbent, Tim Davey, at the head of the BBC. Always good speaking with you. Thanks, Tim. Tim Luckers, your professor and principal of South College at, South, of South College at Dunham University, your former national newspaper editor and executive at, in the news division at the BBC. All right, we'll come back to your conversations. Did the shortage of PPE kit lead to deaths? There's no quotes evidence, says Matt Hancock, and it's mighty hard to get the quotes evidence. But what do you perceive as the reality? Also after the news. Seven people have been arrested after a teenager was stabbed to death in Streatham yesterday afternoon. And LBC's Rachel Venables with the story. 7.31, this is Breakfast with me, Nick Ferrari here on LBC. News time, Simon Conway. The UK is to donate at least 100 million surplus COVID vaccine doses to poorer countries over the next year. Collectively, G7 leaders are expected to agree to donate a billion jabs as they gather in Cornwall for their first in-person summit in two years. New figures show the UK's economy grew by 2.3% in April as coronavirus restrictions were eased. It's the fastest level of growth in GDP since July last year, but the economy still remains below pre-pandemic levels. Euro 2020 begins tonight after being pushed back by a year because of the pandemic. 15,000 fans will watch Italy take on Turkey in the first match of the Stadio Olimpico in Rome. The tournament's being played across 11 host cities, including London and Glasgow. And the weather cloudy for many to start, particularly in the west with some rain in places. Very warm with sunshine or brighter spells for eastern areas, a high of 25 degrees. Leading Britain's conversation at the weekend. Swarbrick on Sunday. Most decisions. Closing down. What on lockdown? Protecting the NHS. Yeah. Natasha Devon. At the moment, transgender people's rights are being erased because they're rolling back the Equality Act. They're not saying the world should revolve around them. They just want to live their life. Majid Nawaz. I'm responsible for me. You're responsible for you. You can't make me responsible for you. That isn't freedom. Listen across the weekend live on Global Player. LBC. All adults without symptoms can now get free rapid COVID-19 testing kits. The test kits are really important. Even if you've had the vaccine, you should still be testing. Regular rapid testing helps us spot outbreaks more quickly, which reduces the risk of overwhelming hospitals and more lockdowns. Tests are easy to use and give results in less than 30 minutes. Order yours today at nhs.uk forward slash get tested or call 119. A beautiful breakfast for a beautiful day, eh, Sergei? Oh, you are leaving, eh? Boss, you go next door. Morning! What a free day, no? What a reward? Yes, stunning! I'm going to swim in my large pool. Oh, I think he's so much better than me. Well, according to this, we might just have better deals on our bills. Ah, uh, that'll show him. Eh, Marlos? Ah, uh, sir, have a nice swim. Don't pay more than next door with neighborhood bills calculator. Calculator based on the average price for energy home insurance and the cheapest broadband in a postcode. Find the credit card you've been looking for. Quick check on effect your score. See if it's a yes, no need to guess with an ocean.